Well, hey artists, welcome back to the art room. Okay, time for step two of our collage still life project. So last time we were together, just to recap, right? We worked on all of these super cool backgrounds, right? We created a background and a tabletop element to it. Now we gotta actually start putting some stuff together in our still life. And we are gonna do some drawing for this, hence all of our drawing practice. So for this video, this is the simple object video. I want you to find a simple object. It's just what I did. This is like a little little wooden top that my uh, my daughter got at the fair. They were doing one of those wood turning demonstrations, and uh, and so they they let her keep this one, which was really cute. And they, you know, put some marker on it, and then of course it it got wet. But there it is, my little simple object, my top. Okay, so to save us a little bit of time on this video, so you have more work time and you kind of get the gist of the directions, I've already pre-drawn out. Okay, just a nice contour outline. Remember, you can work on any paper you have. I'm just using like little half sheets I've torn off of computer paper, line paper, graph paper that you've got for math. Um, again, using scrap mail, like these mailers, um, like I did with this letter, okay, out of, the, um, out of the recycling, will all work great. Grab any paper you've got to work with. Okay, so I've got my number two pencil, got a little bit of tissue here for some blending. Okay, I'm gonna get started. So again, I'm gonna keep this top just off to the side so I've got more drawing space. But you can see that I have, um, you know, that I've been, I've been drawing from observation here. So I'm gonna start just, you know, doing some good drawing, observational drawing skills. I'm looking for where I see those form shadows, their value, dark, middle, or light. I'm just going to start my shading. Now I can see, because I've got a window like over here in this direction in my kitchen, um, that this side of my top and this under edge is definitely darker. So, and this like strip, particularly in the center, is actually pretty dark. A lot of light falls away from that. It gets kind of a little bit lighter in the middle here, but not by much. Just, and this is just a regular number two pencil. There's nothing fancy about it. Good old Ticonderoga. Now this is a curved object, so let's remember that when we are doing or drawing a curved object here, we are using our curved shading stroke. And again, this part, this part's capturing a lot of light at the top. Not so much at the underside here. Right, I'm just trying to give our top this illusion of three dimensional form that kind of meets in the middle. Now this top top section of it is really light so I'm going to leave that really light and just put like the tiniest bit of shading just at the edge and sides because this is all really light up here so I'm using my finest lightest pencil pressure and that looks pretty good remember you do not need really fancy drawing tools to do excellent observational drawing okay i like that now i'm going to deal with the cast shadow this is where i'm going to get in there with some of my really firm pressure because of that strong light source i've actually got a pretty solid cast shadow and already check it out i'm getting some beautiful three-dimensional form on that that illusion of 3D, and a little bit of light shading to this back edge. Notice too, I'm also using my eraser not to fully erase my contour lines, but I do want to lighten them up. Because remember, when we're doing drawing that is meant to look realistic, you want to eliminate those outlines. It's not that outlines are bad, it's just when we're trying to create the illusion of something being really three-dimensional, outlines don't help us, they just flatten whatever we're drawing. All right, there we go, get that cast shadow in there. I'm gonna do a little bit, bit of smudging and put some detail in. Do, 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 and some shading. You'll see how we'll eventually kind of assemble this all together. Now, my shadow, because this is such a small object, does appear really quite flat, If or you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's really, 
a one value except for just a little bit at the front edge here. So I'm just taking my eraser and just lifting off a little bit of pencil towards the front edge of this object. Okay, time to step in here with my blender. So a little bit of paper towel, a little bit of tissue, a little bit of scrap paper out of the recycling, whatever you got. And I'm just gonna take some time to just a little smudge. Remember, you are still drawing when you are blending. You are not just smearing your pencil around. You are still actively drawing. You're still actively observing those shadows and value. We're just trying to smooth and blend our pencil stroke a bit. So we don't have really harsh lines. We want that really beautiful, smooth value. Never, ever, ever underestimate the importance of technical craftsmanship. You know, being able to do something by hand well is a skill that you can develop over years. Okay. Okay. Ooh, there we go. We got some form. That looks nice. Am I getting any weird light shadows? It's tough when you're drawing on camera. There we go. Yeah, I'm getting a little shine from the graphite, but not that. Okay, and now I just want to put in some of the stripe detail that's on there. Some of these little stripes that are on her. Uh... Remember, the stripes are still going to follow the value of the object, though. So the ones that are darker on this underside, I'm using heavier pencil pressure. The ones that are lighter on the top and swirl around. I'm using a lighter pressure. Okay, and there it is. There's my beautiful little top. See, we're, we're doing a warm up, starting with a simple object. Okay, you do not have to use just number two pencil though. Let me show you some others I've done. Um, so check this one out, a top. This is done entirely, where's my box? In good old fashioned Rose Art crayons. Got my kids crayons out. Good old, well, in this case, rose art, but good old Crayola crayons. Okay, regular old crayon. Um, this one here was done using just regular colored pencils. There's some of my colored pencils over here. Okay. This one here, check that out. Ballpoint pen. Nothing, nothing fancy. Just a regular old, I think, optimum. I'm sure this was from a doctor's office or something. So regular old ballpoint pen. Um, and then finally, I got a little fancy and I got my, my kit of watercolors out. Remember in the um, one video too, I did show you homemade watercolors. Okay, so if you don't have them, you can always make them yourself. Um, but I got out some watercolors and did watercolors. So you aren't limited to just regular pencil. I want you to go ahead and use what's, use what's fun for you. Use what's interesting. You wanna try watercolor? Awesome. You know, if you like markers and Sharpies and ballpoint pen, maybe try doing a little pen and ink drawing, right? Get those colored pencils out or crayons even. Or if you just wanna draw in regular old number two pencil, lots of ways we can tackle this simple object. Okay, so for this week, Go for it. I want you to do a simple object to add to our still life. Don't worry about cutting it out yet. We'll do the whole assemblage as the last step. All right, all, thanks for joining me in the art room today, and I look forward to seeing you in our next video. Take care. Bye-bye.